Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to go through functional programming on FreeCodeCamp. So what is functional programming? It's an approach to software development based around the evaluation of functions. So now knowing that, let's go on to the first lesson. Learn about functional programming. So there's three principles for functional programming. It's about isolated functions, pure functions, and functions with limited side effects. Pure functions are really important. It states the same input always gives the same output. And for the challenge, all we have to do is call the get t function with 40 cups. Put in 40 and then go ahead and run it. Yep. Understand functional programming terminology. There is callbacks, which is a function that is passed into another function as an argument. For example, in the filter function, there's a callback function that gets passed into it that tells JavaScript the criteria, criteria for how to filter an array. And it would also be considered a higher order function because higher order functions are functions that take a function as an argument or return a function as a return value. And then the functions that get returned can be called a lambda. Now we want to prepare 27 cups of green tea and 13 cups of black tea using functions. So to do this, we'll call get t and we'll pass in the prepare green tea function to get green tea. And then we'll pass in the number of cups, which was 27. And that'll get us 27 cups of green tea. And we want to do the same thing for black tea. Get t, prepare black tea, and 13. And that should be all we need. Let's try it. Yep. Understand the hazards of using imperative code. Here, some of these functions have side effects. So this tab close function isn't working correctly and we have to fix it. And we have to fix something in here so that it works correctly because it should equal this, but right now it's equaling this, which is not the same. So I'll see what I can do here. Okay, I thought I could get it by just messing with the plus and minus values behind the indexes. Um, I got it close to this one but it's not exact, but I'll try it anyways. Yeah, I thought it wouldn't work. Okay, it turns out we needed a one here instead of index, and I'm pretty sure that's because splice actually changes the array of this.tabs. So once it changes, then we can get the tabs after index by just having one here. And yeah, that should work. Let's try it. Yep. Avoid mutations and side effects using functional programming. So in the last challenge, that was actually like the wrong way to handle that task. And I believe this is also wrong way to do this because for this, we want to return fixed value incremented by one. But I'm pretty sure this is the wrong way to go about this. The best way would be to pass in a value into it and then return it. But yeah, let's just run this. Oh, it wants to it wants us to have a new variable. So yeah, this could be the right way to go about this because it doesn't actually change this value, but it returns a value that's one more than that fixed value. So let's try that. Yep, pass arguments to avoid external dependence in a function. So yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. Here we'll pass in a value and then return the value plus one. And that should work. No, nope. apparently it should return a value that's one larger than the fixed value. So that's weird. Maybe value has to equal fixed value. I don't know, let's try that. No, maybe I have to have a new value equal to value plus one and return the new value. I'll try that. Yep, I guess, okay, whatever. Refactor global variables out of functions. Here the principle is to not change global variables in the function that you're doing. And for the challenge, we want to rewrite the code so the global array book list is not changed inside either function. Because right here, book list is being pushed onto and it's also being spliced and we don't want to change it. So I'll see what I can do here. All right, here I just added a parameter of list, which is the book list that's being passed into it. And then I just pushed on that list instead of directly on the global variable it's being passed in. And then I return it. And then same with this one, added list and then just changed book list to list. And I think this will work, let's try it. Nope, maybe I have to make a copy of it. So there I made a copy with the spread operator and then just changed list to new list. Oh, I gotta return new list here. And let's try that. Yep, there we go. Use the map method to extract data from an array. The map method is really cool. It allows us to map through an array. So here's a big array called watch list and we can map through each part in that array. So each object. So this is one object and that will become the, the parameter that's in this function each time it runs or like when it loops through it. So it'll go to this one and then it'll go to the next one 
and so on, and it'll return this piece of information from it. So right here we can see that users.map is extracting the name out of each of these objects and just putting it into array. And we want to kind of do something like that with this huge object here. Instead of having a for loop, we're going to do a map. So we'll do watchlist.map, and then for each for each movie, what do we want to return? Well, I'm pretty sure we want something like this, except we'll change some stuff up here. Instead, we want the movie title and the movie IMD rate. Just put parentheses around that, and that should be good to go. So for each movie, we're returning the title, movie title, and the rating, movie rating. Let's try that. Oh, delete this first, and maybe set rating equal to this, and that should work. Yep. Implement map on a prototype. Here we want to actually make the map method so that we can figure out more of how it functions and how it works. So I'm trying to figure out how to get this array into this function because it's not passed as the parameter. And I believe the way to do this is to use the this keyword and that will refer to the object that it's called on or the array that is called on. So we're going to use a for loop of let i equal zero, i less than this dot length, and then i plus plus. And then we're going to do a new array dot push our callback function because this callback function returns the item plus some more information or even less information if that's what's needed. So I think that's what we're supposed to do. This refers to this array that it's called on. So let's try that and new. Maybe I have to actually call the callback. Maybe now it'll work. No. Nope. Okay. So I guess instead of pushing the callback, it should be this and then the ith item in this. I'm going to console log this quick. So yeah, this is that variable. How does it do the times two then? Where do I use the callback? Oh, we do callback and then we pass in this i. Yeah, because ca the callback takes a, takes an argument of the item. And in this case, this is the item. So that should work now. Okay. Yep. Use the filter method to extract data from an array. For the challenge, we're going to use map and filter to filter out the movies that have a rating that is greater than or equal to 8.0. So the filtered list is going to equal to the watch list dot map. So first we're going to map it and we're going to map each movie and we're going to grab the rating and the title. Okay, so now filtered list is just the title and the rating. And now we want to filter out the ones that are less than 8.0. So we can just append a filter method onto this and we'll filter each of these movies where the movie dot rating is less than or greater than or equal to eight. So there we go, it got rid of the one that was 7.9 and this should work for us. Let's try it, yep. Now we're going to implement the filter method. So kind of like what we did with map, except this time with filter. And I think I know what I should do now for this. We're going to use a for loop again, let i equals zero, i less than this dot length, i plus plus. And then I think we're going to do if, if callback of the item, so this i, if that's true, then we want to push it onto the new array. So then we'll do new array dot push and we'll push the item on. So this I, and I think that should work. Let's try console logging this quick, new array. So yeah, here it's filtering out the even numbers and 98 is even and it's not in there anymore. So let's try that. Yep. Cool. Return part of an array using the slice method. So I'm pretty sure we just want to implement our custom slice method here. So I guess we'll just do return anim.slice and then begin slice and slice. So we will actually use the JavaScript slice to do this function. I don't know, this is a kind of weird challenge. Now let's try it. Yep. Remove elements from an array using slice instead of splice. So the splice method mutates the original array it's called on, and we don't want to do that. So instead we'll use slice. Just change splice to slice, and I think it should work. Let's try it. Nope. Let's see what it's actually doing. So we actually want Chicago, Delhi, and Islamabad, and not London, Berlin. So I think what we want to do is 0 to 3, and now try that. Yep, there we go. Combine two, two arrays using the concat method. Here we'll just return original.concat attach, and that should work. Yep. Add elements to the end of an array using concat instead of push, because if we use push, then it'll do this, and we actually want it to not have the second brackets. So we'll just change push to concat and try that out. Yep. Use the reduce method to analyze data. For the challenge, we want to find the average rating of all the movies. And to do that, we have to grab the rating of all the movies, add them up and divide them by the amount of movies. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use our map and reduce 
methods, or maybe we just need reduce. Yeah, and what reduce does is it has a callback for the first argument, and then for the second argument is the starting point of the accumulator. So the accumulator is the sum here. So each time this runs, sum is going to accumulate on the value. So here we're adding up the sum of all the ages. We're starting sum at zero, and we're adding the age every time. So it'll go 34 first, and then sum is 34, and then it'll add 20 onto that, so then it's 64, and then it'll add 10 onto that, and then it'll be 64, and then that becomes the sum of ages, 64. So here we'll do the reduce function, average rating equals watch list dot reduce. We'll have our accumulator and our object that's being passed, which is the movie, and we'll put a set of parentheses around those and do our callback. Now what do we want to return from this? Well, we want to take our accumulator, add it up to our movie rating, so movie.imdb rating and that's actually a string so we want to parse it using parse int or parse parse float so there we parse the float and we want the accumulator to start at zero and then once that is done we want to divide it by watchlist.length and there's our average rating 8.52 nice so yeah we're basically just doing the same thing as this one is doing and then we're dividing it at the end by the amount of movies there are so let's try it um it should actually equal 0.675. Huh. Maybe I have to do parse int. No. Maybe instead of using parse, I can do a plus in front. Oh, that's just parse as well. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I'll come back to it later. Okay, so I know what we did wrong now. We have to first get the movies directed by Christopher Nolan. So the way we do this is using filter. So I'll do watchlist.filter first. Filter the movies where the movie dot director, director capitalized, equals Christopher Nolan. And then we'll do dot reduce on, on that. Well, for some reason, it's still not equaling 8.675. Spelling Christopher Nolan right should be right. Like, come on, let's try it. So no. Oh, it's because we're using watch list out length, which is all of them. And we actually don't, we want to divide by the amount that's left. So in that case, we'll do a variable of Chris movies. And then we'll do a variable of total rating equals Chris movies dot reduce and then we'll do total rating divided by Chris movies dot length and there we're getting the answer that we wanted so we're filtering to get Christopher Nolan movies then we're finding the sum of all of those movies ratings and then we're finding the average rating by taking the total rating divided by the amount of Chris movies there are and then we're returning that average rating so let's try that there we go, finally. Use higher order functions map, filter, or reduce to solve a complex problem. For this problem, we want to take out any negative or decimal numbers, and then we want to square the positive integers and return that. So what we'll do is we'll do array.filter, and we'll filter out the negative numbers and the decimals. So we're gonna filter each num. If num, if num is greater than zero, or greater than or equal to, greater than zero. But how do we get, a, get a rid of decimals here? Because we can add another condition onto this with and, but then how do we figure out if it's decimal? Maybe type of num? I'm gonna try console logging this. Uh, it's just a number. Hmm. Okay, so the way to figure out if it's a decimal or not is we can take our number and do modulus on it, except we're going to modulus the parse int number of it. And then we're going to see if that equals zero. So there it got rid of 4.8, so that's good. Now what we can do is we can do dot map on this, and we want to take our number and return number or math.pow number to the second power. And there we're getting 25 and 9, which is 5 squared and 3 squared. So that should work. Let's try this out. Yep, sort an array alphabetically using the sort method. So we'll take an array, we'll return our array.sort, and sort takes in AB, or whatever you want to call them. And we can do A minus B for ascending. I keep forgetting what it's what it does, if it's ascending or descending. But uh, if it's not A minus B, then I think it might be B minus A. I don't know, let's try console logging this quick. A, okay, that is not working. We probably have to use the function kind of like this. So I'll just copy this over and use it here. And we want it in alphabetical order. So we'll do A greater than B. And that seems like it works. So great, let's try it. Yep, return a sorted array without changing the original array. So I think it 
already does that because array is being passed in. So we'll try that first. We'll do array.sort in ascending order. So we'll do our AB and it will return A minus B. Let's console log this. So that's ascending. Let's try it, doesn't work because it's actually changing this array. So instead we will make a copy of it. So let copy equal dot 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 array, spread it in, and then do copy.sort, and then try that out. There we go. Split a string into an array using the split method. So we'll return our string.split, and then we can pass a regular expression into this for our delimiter, which we want to be a space, a comma, or a dash, or anything that's not a letter. So I think we can do that with, what would it be, backslash capital W, possibly? Let's console log this. Yeah, that seems like that is what it is. Sweet, let's run that. Cool. Combine an array into a string using the join method. So for this challenge, we want to take the dashes out of this string. So what we'll do is we'll do return string dot split and we'll split after every dash and then we'll join it with a space in between. And that should work. Let's try it. No. Nope. Oh, it should work with dots and commas as well. So instead of dash here, we'll do backslash W with a regular expression backslash capital W and try that. There we go. Apply functional programming to convert strings to URL slugs. For this challenge, we want to take a string like winter is coming and turn it into winter dash is dash coming. So I think we can just return title dot split and we'll split every space and then we'll join it with a dash. And let's try that out. No. Oh, it should also be lowercase. So we'll do title dot to lowercase and we'll have that lower and we'll do lower dot split. Let's try that out. So it worked for most of them except for this one that has a space in front. So we'll do title dot to lowercase dot trim to trim off all the excess space spaces at the front and at the end. Let's try that out now. Okay, that did not work because there is more than one space in here. And I'm thinking of ways to get rid of the extra spaces. And I think what we can do is we can use a filter function. So instead we can do lower.split by a, all of them. And then we can do filter and we can filter out the spaces. You know, actually we want to split by spaces though. So yeah, we'll split with a space and then we'll filter our word and we'll only return it if it is not equal to an empty string and then we'll join it by a dash. So hopefully this gets rid of all the extra spaces. Let's try it. Yep, there we go. Use the every method to check that every element in an array meets a criteria. So this is like the filter function, except it returns true or false, depending on if they all meet it or not. So we'll return our array dot every, and this will take our number, and we're gonna check if number is greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero, just to check if it's positive. Let's try it. Yep. Use the sum method to check that any elements in an array meet a criteria. So this is the opposite of every. It just checks sum. So we're going to check if there's any element in the array that's positive. So we'll return array dot sum number. Number is positive. So number greater than or equal to zero. And this will return true. Let's try it. Yep. Introduction to currying and partial application. Currying is pretty complicated and really confusing. What it does is it restructures a function so it takes one argument, then returns another function that takes the next argument, and so on. And here they have some examples. So I'm guessing we want to do something like this for our challenge, or we can do something like this, because what we want to do is we want to add these three numbers up. And here it's giving an example of doing it with one and two. And so the first one would be x, and then the second one would be y, and then they add them up. So I think I will return y equal arrow to z equal arrow to x plus y plus z. So here add 10 returns a function of this and then when we do this then it calls this function that has the y and that returns this function here and then we call 30 on that and z becomes 30 and then it finally returns our answer at the end of all these three numbers combined. So let's try this out. Yep, it works. And there we go. We completed the functional programming part of Freed Code Camp. Next up we have intermediate algorithm scripting challenges and they should be quite a bit tougher than the basic algorithm scripting ones but i'm excited to go through them and it might take a while and the video might be a little bit longer or be cut up into two parts for that one but yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you next time